Okay, here's my WBC 50 predictions uh, take place today. Um, well, I'm recording this on Tuesday, August 17th, but the event will be posted on YouTube tomorrow morning, so technically it's today, August 18th. Um, it's going to be at the Palms in Las Vegas, Nevada. It happens this night, this evening. Um, well, I, I was going to get them out Monday, but I've been too busy at work. Um, and then obviously you can see I'm at work now. I'm working late all night, so I had to get these out. Um, I missed this last UFC 117. I was sick. Uh, I was about to miss these. I was so sick. Um, but I thought I'd just put them out there, just put them out there. Um, like I always do, preliminaries, I'm just going to say who wins, but I will be discussing them. I normally don't. Um, I'll start discussing to the best of my ability. Um, so yeah, let's get this going. First fight, Danny Castillo versus Justin Poirier. Uh, Castillo, I think this is a must win for him. Uh, if he wants to stay in the WBC. Uh, he is the bigger, stronger fighter in my eyes. Um, I think he's got to take it to the ground. I've seen a couple of Poirier's fights. Um, and uh, I was going to say, I have to give the advantage on the ground to Castillo. Um, Poirier, he's a young, good, up and down fighter, uh, better than two in the stand up, as, as I can see. And he needs to take advantage of Castillo's slow start to win this fight. Um, because if anything is majorly dogged on Castillo, I think, is that he starts slow in the majority of his fights. And Poirier needs to take advantage of that. And he can do that. He, he's young, he's, he's a good up and comer, good prospect. Um, but he, he, he needs to catch him. Um, and I, I'm going to say in the first round. Um, but the question is can he do it? Danny Castillo is a tough fighter, um, hard to stop, and I'm not going to think it's going to happen. So I'm going to go with Danny Castillo. I think he takes it to the ground. He's going to win a decision. But he's going to get a late second round, third round stoppage. So I'm going to go with Castillo in that fight. Next fight, Fredson Pixel versus Brian Carway. Uh, this fight's a little easier to pick than the last one. I just think Pixel is better on the feet, better on the ground, just overall just better. Um, he can, well, if he gets it to the ground, he can finish on top or on the bottom. Um, if he stays on the feet, I think he just picks Carway apart. Uh, Carway's best part of his game is he's a wrestler. He's very one-dimensional, um, and even if he gets picked out to the ground, I see him getting committed. So I just think picked out just too good overall. So I'm gonna go with Preston picked out over Brian Carway. Next fight, Dave Jensen with Ricardo Lamas, very similar to the last one. Um, Dave Jensen, one-dimensional as hell, and he's just he's a good wrestler, but I think Lamas is better at it. Um, Lamas is better in the feet. He's better on the ground. I just think he can win this on the feet or on the ground. He's a better striker, technical-wise. Um, and I just think he's a better technical wrestler. So, with that being said, Ricardo Lamas and AJ Jensen. Uh, <clears throat> the next fight, the easy train stops in my eyes. Anthony Nicodawani versus uh, Masie Jusko. Um, probably said his name wrong, but I'm um, sorry. Uh, this fight's a little hard to pick just because uh, the, the unknown of Jusko. And I, I've seen a couple of Jusko's fights. I found him on the internet after searching. And, um, He's good at taking two people to the ground, and, and he's good on the ground. He's, he's pretty good. Um, but at the same time, um, he said in, a, in an interview that he wants to stand up with Nick Dewani. So um, if he stands up with Nick Dewani, we all know Nick Dewani is a good striker, uh, very good actually in my eyes. And he's, uh, I think he's way better than on the feet than um, uh, than Juice Bill is. So, um, but the question with Nick Dewani is, has he improved his takedown defense? Um, because Jusko can definitely take him down, like I said, um, but even though in the interview he did say he was wants to stand up with Nick Dewani, we all know how that happens, you know, fighters say, oh, I'm going to stand up with the fighter, fight time happens, and it doesn't happen, um, but I'm going to go with Jusko's word on this, and say he's going to try to stand with Nick Dewani, I think that's a mistake, so with that being said, I will go with Nick Dewani, but if Jusko does decide to switch his game plan and just decide to take Nick Dewani down, then I got to go with Jusko. But I'm going to go with on the word of Jusko saying he's going to stand up with Nick Dewani. I think Nick Dewani is a better striker. So Anthony Nick Dewani over Masie Jusko. Next fight, Javier Vasquez versus Mac Demanis uh, Semiazar. Um, I, I don't want to be crude or rude to Mr. Mac Demanis, but I think the sub of Wagner Fabiano is a fluke. Um, I think Vasquez, I, th I think he's better on the feet, even though I can test the beach a little bit. Uh, well, no, I think he hasn't. Well, I don't know. I forgot how tall uh, uh, Max Menes is. But, anyways, um, I just think the sub of Wagon Fabiano was just a fluke. Um, I don't see him doing that to Vasquez. I think Vasquez is a much better grappler. Um, I think he's even better on the feet. So, um, once again, I think this is, this is Vasquez's fight to win. I don't see him really losing this unless he makes a mistake like uh, Wagon did. Um, so with that being said, I, I think if Vasquez does get the stoppage here, 
um, some of the most popular Vasquez, Javi over Maximanis. So there's my preliminaries. Um, on to my main bout predictions. Okay, on to my main card predictions. First one, Bart Palachowski versus Zach Mikkelright. Um, only team one side of Mikkelright that was last time he was in the WEC. And uh, he, he seemed pretty good on the feet. Um, uh, but at the same time, Bart Palachowski is not too shabby on the feet here. He's pretty decent. Um, and I, get, I have to give the grappling to here. Bart Palachowski, I just think he's a better grappler. Um, I haven't seen much of Michael White on the recent grounds, and I have seen a lot of uh, power. I want to say Bart. Uh, I've seen a lot of Bart on the ground, so I just have to give the advantage in the grappling department to him. Um, Michael White is a young, good you know, prospect, too. Um, but I just think uh, Bart Palachowski just has the overall better skills than Michael White. I could be wrong here. Michael White could surprise me. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Michael White surprised me, if that makes any sense. Um, but I'm going to go with Bart Palachowski. He's just a better grappler, and i got to go with that. So I'm going to go with Bart Palachowski, third round submission over Zach McBride. Early third, late second. Um, next fight, uh, Scott Jurgensen versus Brad Pickett. Um, one punch Pickett. I don't know why I like that nickname, even though he's not really a one punch uh, knockout person. But hey, I, I know his nickname he got from some weird story, and that doesn't include a one punch knockout. But, anyways, um, uh, I hate to say it, but I think this WC is a setup fight for Jurgensen um, to win. I think WC set this up so that uh, he stays busy, he doesn't get cage rushed, and I think you know WC is expecting Jurgensen to free pick it, and then he maintains his number one contender status and waits for the winner of the main event of this card. Um, but I would not be surprised if Pickett did pull the upset here. Um, if he can take Jurgensen down and control him all three rounds, then he can do it. And he's a good wrestler, Pickett is. Um, but Jurgensen is so tough and, and so gutsy. Um, I just don't see that happening. Would I be surprised if Pickett did win? Maybe a little, but not really. Um, Jurgensen definitely the better fighter on the on the on the feet, um, and he's not too shabby on the ground, like I said. So if he does get taken down, I could see Jurgensen just getting right back up and just you know striking again. Um, Jurgensen the much bigger fighter in my eyes, um, and I just see Jurgensen winning this fight. He's just too strong on the feet and on the ground. Um, he could get a stoppage. Um, but I'm gonna, Brad Pickett's pretty tough, so I'm going to go with Scott Jurgensen, unanimous decision over Brad, one punch. Next fight, <laughs> Chad Mendez versus Cub Swanson. Um, a lot of people underestimate Cub Swanson in this fight, a lot of people. And I think Cub Swanson is very underrated in my mind. Um, he lost to Jens Fulver, as Jens Fulver, you know, was making his debut, he was like hot and um, Then he got knocked out by Jose Allen with like double knee knockout. Um, but still, he's a great striker. I mean, Cub Swanson is no doubt about it. Probably the better striker in this fight. Um, he's faster on the feet, in my eyes. Um, and he could win this fight, no doubt about it, in my eyes. But Mendez, even though he's not the good strike on here, his wrestling is just too good. He's probably, he's probably the best wrestler in that weight division in the WEC. Um, he, I think he's going to have an easy time taking Swanson down. Um, and he's just going to ground and pound him for all three rounds, I truly um, but I won't I won't be surprised if Swanson does win this fight, but I just think Mendes and wrestling is just too much for Cub. And um, yeah, so I want Swanson to win. I'm a Cub fan, but I just think uh, Mendez is just a better wrestler and his wrestling is just been too much. So Chad Mendez unanimous decision over Cub Swanson. Next fight, the co main event. Anthony Pettis versus Shane Roller. Um, the safe pick here is obviously Roller. He's just a great wrestler. Uh, he's a, he was a great collegiate wrestler in Division One. Oh, no, I think it was Division One. Um, he, he's a better wrestler in this fight, obviously, and he could take this fight down all three rounds and win the decision easily. But I think Pettis' ground game is very underrated, and I could see him committing Roller. I truly can. Um, Roller, like I said, probably the safe pick. He has he's a better wrestler on He could win by decision. Uh, his striking is not at the level of Pettis, um, but I think he knows that, and I don't think he's going to try to stand up with Pettis. Um, even though Pettis is the better striker, and he has decent takedown defense, I do see him getting taken down. But like I said, he has underrated ground game, and I do see Pettis getting the submission here. So, even though Roller is a safe pick here, I, I did a lot of safe picks on this card. This is not one of them. I'm going to go with a slight, not really an upset, but Anthony Pettis. Second round submission over Shane Roller. I think he catches Roller as he gets taken down. Um, and 
second round, I just, let's see, I, he either gets taken down, gets submitted, or in the first round, he gets taken down, he gets put on the ground all the, the whole round, that's where I'm going. Pettis figures out, okay, you know what, I'm not going to get taken down. I need to fucking knock this guy out. He goes in there, clips Shingola, Shingola tries to do his wrestling, which is just an instinct to take him down, and then Pettis catches on to his submission like a guillotine or... I don't want to say a guillotine and wins the fight. So I'm going to go with Anthony Pettis, second round submission over Shane Waller, even though Waller's probably going to win. <coughs> Sorry. Um, on to the main event, Dominic Cruz versus Joseph Benavidez. Um, they fought before, Cruz won. Um, he mixed his striking up with, surprisingly, he took down Benavidez, who I think is the better wrestler. I think he surprised also Benavidez when he did that, and I think Benavidez is going to be, you know, prepared for that this time. Um... But I still think Cruz is going to take him down. Um, Cruz, he, Cruz, he mixes up his striking with his takedowns. He's just so he's so fluent in his in his game that it's, it's, uh, I'm a big fan of Dominic Cruz. I, um, he, he's just he's, he's awkward. He's very unorthodox. Um, so is Joseph Benavides, but I just think Dominic Cruz is just he's, he's faster, he's stronger. Um, I just think overall he's just more well rounded. Um, Cruz, he should win this fight in my eyes. He has, he has good takedown defense. He's a great striker. Um, and I don't see Benavidez having an answer for that. Um, Benavidez is a great wrestler. Benavidez could definitely do what he did to Miguel Torres. But there's a big difference between Miguel Torres and Dominic Cruz. Miguel Torres, his takedown defense kind of kind of sucks. Um, Dominic Cruz, I think, has much better takedown defense than Miguel Torres. Um, even though Miguel Torres is a much better grappler than Dominic Cruz, but, but Dominic Cruz has more of a flow, you know, more fluent game. Um, he has great takedown defense. He can take people down. Um, he has great striking. He has, you know, decent submission. I just think Cruz overall is more, more diverse in his game than Benavidez. Um, we, we could, if this does get taken to the ground, we could see a great grappling fight. Um, you know, we see a lot of exchanges, a lot of reverses, stuff like that. And I love to see that. Some people think it's boring. I think it's exciting. Um, we could see that if Benavidez does get this to the ground for like a long period of time. Um, but Cruz, he's improved a lot since his last bout with Benavidez, and so was Benavidez. I mean, look what he did to Miguel Torres. Um, in my eyes, like I said, Cruz is a bigger fighter. Um, he's definitely the better striker than Benavidez. Um, and like I said, I think Cruz needs to, you know, keep this fight gaining majority of the fight. Um, Benavidez, he's also improved, like I said, since the, uh, the last fight. Uh, needs to get inside of Cruz. That's the key, in my eyes, to get beat. Dominic Cruz is that Benavidez needs to get in that clinch range where he pushes Dominic Cruz against the cage, um, dirty boxing, or he can just use that to take him down. But he's, but he's got to get inside that clinch range. He's got to stop Cruz from moving east to west laterally. If he can do that, he has a great shot of winning this. But can he do it? No, I don't think he can. So I, th I see Dominic Cruz winning this. Um, I see. I don't want to pick a decision here, but. I'm going to say Dominic Cruz, fourth round TKO. Um, I just think of the, he's going to just he's gonna push the pace on the feet. And by the fourth round, Joseph Benavidez's pace is going to be looking all bloody, cut up. And he's going to get him probably on the ground and start punching him, and the referee stops it. That's what I see. Um, so there it is. There's my WC prediction, 7250, August 18th, today, um, at the Palms in Las Vegas, Nevada. So I hope you enjoy my predictions. Um, like I said, background's different because I'm at work. I don't know if I should be doing this at work. Should I get in trouble? I don't know. Who cares? Um, so there you go. I'm out of here. Adios.